Yep. So Watson was asked about like the chemistry with the receivers and things like that. And I'm going to play a clip here and then just pay attention to one name in particular. You've already mentioned it oh, I know in this name. show, yeah. so we'll just hear what he has to say. It's great because Elijah can do all types of things. He's very versatile. He can play outside, inside, uh, whatever you need him to do, he can do. But also just the young guys and the depth that we have in that receiver in. Yeah, a lot of guys might not have big names yet, but they can go out there and they can make plays. And being able to, you know, hang around Amari, hang around DPJ, hang around Elijah, the young guys are being able to, you know, channel that opportunity, that grind, that work, and be able to go out here and participate and be locked in and focus. And, um, you know, that's what we've been able to see. And we want to have depth and, um, you know, everyone be able to have the opportunity to make plays. So he talked about the young guys learning from a couple names, Amari, DPJ, and Elijah Moore was included in that list of guys that Deshaun is happy the young guys get to learn from. Yep. So that tells me, and I don't know about you guys, I'll let you weigh in, but it tells me that Elijah Moore is not just showing out at camp and everything. He's making his presence felt and he's a leader. Yeah, I Everything that I see coming out of camp and even just little articles here and there, this guy's going to be everywhere. I saw him take a handoff today. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm sweet. just I'm just like, okay. So for me, it's very, very exciting. Doesn't Deshaun Watson just sound so different this year? Just like in his confidence answering, back. confidence, just just different. It just feels different. And they've said that. I think he just kind of the experience of getting the whole full off season, all most of this crap is gone. Just kind of a different guy. I'm and I'm hoping it translates. Yeah. Derek, what do you think? Yeah, it is kind of weird to hear uh, uh, Elijah Moore's name being thrown in with as if he's a vet because <laughs> we've really not seen a whole lot out of Elijah Moore top level play in the NFL, you know, and and you can't really blame him for that. Um, but what we've seen coming out of camp, it's so promising because again, all we've heard is yeah, the offense is going to be more passing. Well. If that's the case, then the role that I see laid out right now for Elijah Moore is he's going to be our version of Debo Samuel. He's going to be our version of Amon Ross St. Brown. And that gets me excited because I absolutely love those two players. But more specifically, I love the role that they have for them because they're not just limited to a certain spot. Like Elijah Moore, the ability to move him around as much as you know they're going to that's going to open things up for so many others. And Stefanski, whether if the fan base wants to give him credit or not, is a really good play designer. He yeah. can get guys open. And if he if he can use Elijah Moore kind of as that chess piece and move him across the board, that just opens up more creativity to get guys like Tillman on the field in year one. And just guys like that who maybe won't get as much playing time but because you have a do-it-all player like Elijah Moore, it's going to open up so much more. And I couldn't be more excited because guess what? If you have somebody else you can throw into the backfield, then what else happens with Nick Chubb? Because originally it was, hey, man, the Browns are lining up in pistol. Imagine that Deshaun Watson, Nick Chubb option. What are you going to do there? Well, guess what? Now you have Elijah Moore in the backfield as well. Right. So good luck. Yeah, no mm -hmm. kidding. I mean, you guys think, I, I put this in here because this is honestly what I believe, but I think Elijah Moore has a big season this year. And I think Elijah Moore is, I easily could be the wide receiver one for the Browns as soon as next year. I don't think, I don't think it's crazy. <laughs> I'm just, so I'm curious because <laughs> training camp time everybody we hear this every year these guys are getting focused on amari cooper last year was such a big part of the offense it'd be it's hard for me to think that they'd completely like move away from that i don't it just depends i'm not on production. saying amari cooper's not here yeah no i know i'm just saying i'm saying like mm -hmm. do i think that there could be multiple guys that could easily go over a thousand yards. So like, I think Amari Cooper, if he's healthy, he's going over a thousand, right? Yeah. I would, I would yep. almost bank on that if he's healthy. Do I think Elijah Moore can also go over a thousand yards? I mean, if it's, if they're doing what they're saying and it's the scheme is pretty much built around him, I guess so. But it's just, it's crazy. Cause we got him for a third round pick basically. 
<laughs> it's just it's nuts that we're going to get that kind of production and he could possibly become the number one well i mean do you think he's going to be the number one? I don't know, man Derek, what do you think mm. now, i'm not I saying don't. this year i'm not saying this yeah, year i'm I think saying it's still that, yeah. that eventually by the time he reaches his second contract it will be with the browns and it will be as the top dog in that receiver room yeah I don't see him, and this is kind of because if you go back and remember, I uh, stirred the pot when we traded for him because I wanted a Jerry Judy trade. The oh, reason gosh. why I was upset, the reason why I was upset with that whole situation is because I don't view Elijah Moore. I, I guess maybe my definition of a number one receiver is a lot different than maybe a couple other people's. But for me, I'm not saying he can't be. Because I certainly think he could be. But if you're talking next season or the season after that, I'm not I can't say that for sure until I see it. Because it also it determines who you have around you, right? I talked about Debo Samuel. Well, guess what? Brandon Ayuk is a stud. Mm -hmm. He's he's a very good football player, very good wide receiver. And also they have George Kittle. So you could sit there and say, Yeah, Debo's their number one. Well, there's help there. So in two to three years, maybe, but I, I just can't, without seeing it on the field first, and it's impossible to know who is going to be in this wide receiver room. Obviously, Tillman, obviously, Elijah Moore, David Bell. Those are kind of your three right now, but I don't know. It, it's a wait and see thing for me, but I certainly hope so because this kid. Go back to wa go back and watch him in college. Forget mm, yeah. the NFL. Just yep. go back and watch him pre-draft. This dude can do it all, and that's why we're letting him do it all. The Jets limit him to his limited him to this little role with a terrible quarterback, yeah. and you haven't even seen Elijah Moore yet. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a reason knows? he was we'll almost see. a first round pick. Or was he pick two in the second? Yeah, something like that. So yeah, he basically was a first. Yeah, yeah essentially, but. Um, okay, so maybe I'm putting the cart a little before the horse. You guys are telling me. It's okay. I'm not saying that this is a guarantee. I'm saying that with his talent, with what they, you know, they invested in him to go get him. And, you know, if the, if what you said, Justin, like if the scheming around him that they're talking about is actually happening and it does fulfill itself this year, this season, I think he definitely levels up. Mm -hmm. I, and it's kind of a piggyback off of what Derek said too. I don't know if he'll ever be like a a number one, number one guy. guy I'm talking like a, one like uh, Amon Ross St. Brown. <sighs> I mean, that's now that's I, I know what you mean, Derek. We're we're thinking like that big alpha dominant bully. You. Well, I'm saying like, do you, could you see it where he picks up 13, 1400 yards? Yes, that's what I'm talking I mean, about. That's what I'm saying. That's, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking a hundred plus receptions. Yes, Oof. that's what I'm talking about. Number one receiver. <sighs> We'll see. I'm no, I don't think it's. I don't think it's wild. I just think that I would be less surprised if it was a Mark Cooper. Well, I'm just saying, not this year. Now this year, I'm thinking. I think he can push for a thousand. Elijah Moore. I think maybe he gets in that 900ish range. Maybe he goes over a thousand. That'd be cool. But I'm talking down the road. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Dogs Podcast. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at The Dogs Podcast. Get your thoughts on the show at thedogspodcast.com.